Welcome to this crash course into Emacs um, as part of the Emacs Bytes screencast series. So in this initial screencast, I'm going to show you some really, really basic stuff. If you already know something about programming Emacs, this might not be very useful for you at all. But if you know nothing at all about programming Emacs or programming Lisp, this is just where to start. So we're going to start by making a completely scratch Emacs. If you've got Emacs installed on your system, I hope you have, because otherwise this isn't going to work, um, then this will make sure that anything you do here avoids your installed Emacs. You might be using that for JavaScript or Python or Java or whatever. Um, even, God forbid, common Lisp. Um, so this will completely avoid getting any of that. Um, marked up by what we're going to do. So we're going to first make a uh, crash course directory and then we're going to start Emacs with a home directory and mine is uh, there. Uh, my Emacs is there. So we just move it in a bit and this starts Emacs in a completely blank way. I can prove that to you by uh, we go in here and there's nothing there. I've got no init file or anything. Um, so that's great and we can start to muck around. So I'm going to show you a basic setting of variables, uh, evaluating things, local variables and uh, functions and how they don't conflict uh, and that's pretty much what we're going to do here. So let's start off by setting a variable that's done by set queue. We evaluate with control X, control E. Oh, sorry, I forgot <laughs> I forgot the close string. Control X, control E. Um, and we can see down the bottom that it says a string, that's what that evaluates to. So let's just say nick thing. Control X control E. Um, so now the variable nick thing contains uh, reference to a string nick thing. This is pretty much normal for um, you know any variable thing in other language. We might say nick thing equals uh, a string, and yet others we might have to say that. Um, now let's look at local variables again. These work how you might expect. Um, let's make that plus one. So now I'm going to control X E that. We can see that that's 11. It doesn't it doesn't go bah, I don't understand because I can't add, a, add one to a string or anything like that. Nick thing is 10 here and therefore it's 10 here. If we come down here and go Nick thing it's still a string. In fact, if we go back up, it's still a string. So uh, there's nothing relevant about the order of the way we put things in in the scratch buffer. It's uh, it's just some it's just a buffer of text, and we can put things anywhere and then evaluate them. It's uh, evaluation of a type that matters. Um, so you also notice that we could change the type of that. There's no typing associated with this. That It didn't matter that it was a string and we changed it to an integer. And Lisp is completely fine with that. So now let's look at setting a function. Defun nick thing. It's going to take a variable x. And we're going to say nick thing is 7. So now we've got a local variable called nick thing plus x nick thing. To make this function um, available to us to use, I can't I can't just say nick thing uh, I could type that would be good uh, for that won't work. You see the message here is void function nick thing. This function doesn't exist yet. I have to come to the end of the function and do control X control E to evaluate the function. The result of evaluating the function is nick thing. And now I can execute Nick thing, and that's 11. So let's look at what's going on. Firstly, it's a little bit surprising 
that we can call a function nick thing and for that not to have any effect if we come and do this again uh, it's still a string and that's because Emacs Lisp is a Lisp 2 and a Lisp 2 is where functions and variables are kept completely separately so you can have any function called the same thing as a variable is this a good idea? Probably not, but I wanted to illustrate that it was possible. So, that's the first surprising thing. We pass Nick thing the value 4, so 4 is clearly passed in as x here. The next thing is we declare a variable here, so this overrides the outer value of Nick thing, which is a string. Um, so Nick thing is now 7, and then we can see that 7 plus 4 is what we're expecting to get. 11. So that's really pretty much it. The only thing to say is that once we've done uh, Nick thing, we can go and look it up by doing a function lookup in Emacs. And we can see that it takes a value x. Um, so that's pretty much it from the crash course. It's very basic. We'll be following on with more in-depth discussions on all sorts of different bits of Emacs and Lisp. Thanks very much.